Welcome to Complio. My name is Jennifer Myers, and I am the Clearance and Placement Coordinator at Harrisburg Area Community College for our education program. Complio is a safe and secure database where HACC will be keeping your clearance documents and also sharing your compliance documents with the field placement assignment you receive. The first step in Complio is to create an account. When you get to this website, you'll choose the orange button at the bottom, and this will take you to American Data Bank's website where you will create your account username and password and fill in your contact information. It's very important for your contact information to include an email that you will be checking frequently because you will be receiving updates from this database. Once you have your account, you're ready to go. I'm going to log in on my account. And show you some of the steps that you'll go through as a student using Complio. The first thing you're going to do when you get to Complio is place an order. Your institution name, Harrisburg Area Community College, should already be in this blank. You'll need to start by selecting your enrollment date. Then you'll select your campus location. Last, you'll select the program that you are enrolled in at Harrisburg Area Community College. Then select Load Packages. There are two packages at Harrisburg Area Community College. Now, you don't see the first package on my screen because I have already purchased the HACC Compliance Package prior to doing this video. This package is $41, and it's the first thing you need to select as a student at HACC. This $41 package gives you secure storage for two years from your enrollment date, and it also gives you the ability to share your compliance documents with your field placement assignments and view your schedule for your field placement assignments. If you have not already selected this package, you can go ahead and do that now. There is a second package available to you as a HACC student, and this is our Pennsylvania Statewide Screening Package. This package is $14, and this is your Pennsylvania Criminal Record Check. So if you need to get a new record check, you would also select this package and then pay for that. We're going to move on from here. This package will need to include your personal information and You will scroll down and read the signature form, and this is just a summary of the rights. Uh, it's your disclosure and authorization. You will click here and you will sign electronically using your mouse pad or your mouse. And I know this is always fun to sign electronically. If you need any help at any time, Complio offers two very simple services. One is a video tutorial of how to do this and also the Get Help button. Please feel free to use them. They are very valuable and they've helped a lot of our students out. Sorry, I need to move my box up a little bit. And at this point, you would process this package for $14, and you would be then, um, you would have your, your $41 package for storage, and if you need that patch statewide screening, you would have that for $14. At this point, I'm going to take you into another area of Complio. Within our database, you can always use the sidebar 
and this is to edit your profile information, which would be your contact information. If your phone number changes or your primary email changes, you should go in and edit that profile. Also, you can always view your order history, which shows you what purchases you have made. We have a message center. If you have any messages from Complio, um, and that'll, the, they will list those there and the date. If you want to see any of your reports for compliance, you can see those under this bar. I don't have any right now. And if you ever want to share your information with an employer or anyone else, um, I will do your sharing to your field experience, but you are welcome to share this profile with anyone else. And so that's something that you can take care of right there using the profile sharing button. And if you want to ever access the video tutorials that they offer for you, they have many of them there and it does explain a general way of using their website. Now, the next thing that we need to do is see how we can upload our clearances with that package. We're going to do that in video two. I have a storage package on Complio, I am going to log right back in and this is what I see as soon as I'm logged in. This is the reminder notification and you'll see this every time that you log into Complio if there's something you're not compliant in. Now for compliance on, on this website and with Harrisburg Area Community College you need to be compliant within four areas. Your t tuberculosis test, your Pennsylvania criminal check, your Pennsylvania child abuse check, and your FBI fingerprint check. And those handouts, uh, those are on the one page handout, the directions to obtain all of those. The only one you can receive through American Data Bank is the criminal check, and that's that package number to the screening package for $14. Otherwise, you will follow directions on the one page directions, and you will obtain your tuberculosis test and upload it to the database your criminal, I'm sorry, your child abuse check and your FBI fingerprint check. All of those are done outside of this database and then you will take your document, you'll take a picture of it, you'll scan it, and you'll put it right into this data bank. Now, I'm gonna log out of here. I'm gonna show you how to upload those things. It does give you a nice video for the first time that you visit and it will show you a very detailed way to do this. I'm gonna do the quick video and if you need help, please go back and view this video. Now, you can see right now I am not compliant in any way, shape, or form. So what you need to do, um, this is your main profile board. This should show every time you log in. If at any point you're somewhere else in the website and you want to come back to this, you're going to use the Upload Documents tab at the top, and that will get you back to this area. Now I'm going to start, and let's see if I can do this for you in a simple way, with um, my Pennsylvania criminal check. I already have my criminal check, so I didn't order it through them. What you're going to do is you're going to um, put in enter requirement. You'll do that for each of your documents. And then you're going to select Pennsylvania criminal check. And scroll down a little bit. And you're going to look at your criminal check and you're going to put the date on it um, of when it's compliant. Now, I don't know the date because mine is right now filed in my computer, so I'm gonna to have to do that second. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna to go to Browse on my computer, and I'm gonna find it. Bear with me. I have to always find where my things are. There's my criminal check. I'm going to choose that. Okay, and now you can see that it is there. Now, unfortunately, I don't know the, I didn't get to see the date because I didn't pull it up. And since we're doing the video, I'm just going to put a date in. I'm, but you will look at your actual uh, report and you'll see what the date is. And I, I got mine somewhere in the spring last year. So 
So put that in. And the document is <clears throat> selected. And I'm going to put in that my, my criminal record check is clear. If you have a criminal record, at that point you will choose flagged. But I'm going to choose clear. If you want to share anything with the reviewers, um, I, I do review these. But we also have a verification team at American Data Bank, and they will also be reviewing things. So if you want to put something in that you know it's going to expire in another month, that you will be back to renew it, or anything you want, you can add in the notes section there. And then you hit submit. Now what happens is that does not automatically give you compliance in this area. After you submit the document, what's going to happen is either myself or a team of reviewers will look at that document. We will make sure that it is an authentic document and that it follows all the areas that we need to determine your compliance. So that's why it's going to say not compliant up here. It should say pending review in most cases if you've done this correctly. Now mine does not say that yet and that's okay. What's going to happen now is the pending review is over here they will see that and they will verify that. Now, you will do the same thing for tuberculosis. You will do the same thing for your child abuse check and your FBI fingerprint check. I want to note that for the FBI finger check, fingerprint check, we do not need the official document that they send you in the mail. That is for your own records. All we need is the number that begins with the letters PAE from your registration. Once you have that, take a picture of your receipt or uh, upload the receipt and put the PAE number in the notes section and that way we can run that check right away and you don't have to wait for that fingerprint check to come in the mail. Now, the next thing I'm going to do is show you how to upload documents in your optional category and that's going to be in our next video. from your four required compliance documents, you will be asked to upload four optional compliance documents. You only need to upload these documents one time within your program at HACC. So once they're in our Complio database, you'll never have to upload them again. They do not expire. So those four documents are the NACI Code of Ethics, the HACC program standards, the mandated reporter training certificate, and the HACC cell phone policy. Now, two of these categories are going to be electronically signed on the database, and two of these categories are going to be uploaded. So let's start with the electronic signing. Our NACI code of ethics and our uh, cell phone policy are going to be signed electronically. So you're going to do some different things on those. The first thing you're going to do is go to enter requirement and then it will open up a new window and it looks like you can click here but what happens when you click here is nothing and I know some of our students have been running into a problem with this so what you do instead is go down here and select a requirement and you select your NACI code of ethics that's going to open a window you're going to put in the date and for today's date right now it's the 7th and for the document this is not necessary because that document I already that's for something else um, the signature date would be the same thing and then you will click on the PDF for complete document What well, this will bring up is our NACI Code of Ethics, and you should have read this when you were in 110 or 111. And what you need to do is you need to read through the Statement of Commitment and make sure that you feel comfortable um, agreeing to all of these commitments. If you are comfortable um, making sure that you can follow the NACI Code of Ethical Conduct, you can see today's date or the date that you selected is right there. And then what you're going to do is you're going to sign here. So you're going to sign electronically again. This is harder than it looks. And there's my signature. 
And if you want to try again, you can hit clear signature. It doesn't really matter what it looks like though. And you will save it. And now you will close the window. And this is now going to be um, fulfilling the requirement for the NAC Code of Ethics. For our cell phone policy, it does have a pop-up window and it says you can click here. And it also shows you can click here. Those do not work for whatever reason. So again, go over to Enter Requirement. Um, again, we're not going to use the boxes up here. We're going to go under Select a Requirement and select the hack cell phone policy. Scroll down. You're going to put in the date again and the signature date. And then you'll come over to the complete document and you'll pull up the cell phone policy. There it is. Read through that. It's really important. It will have your name come up. This is my name for my test account. It will have my date. And it looks like you'd sign right here, but instead you're going to scroll down and you're going to sign in the box. Okay. Then you'll hit save and eventually you'll hit close. I'm not going to do that one for you. Um, now, that, those are your two electronic components. Our hack program standards and our mandated reporter training are not electronically signed. So what you'll do for those is you can scroll over top and what you need to do is click on here and this time it does work. And you'll see there are our hack program standards. You need to print off this form. You can also get this form from your um, instructor, but it's right here on the website. You might as well just print it off from here. You have to go through once it's printed and you have to check every box. Don't just check them, read them and make sure that you can commit to this because we will hold you. This is a contract um, that you can follow these standards. If there's anything that you can't physically do, you need to contact your instructor about that. But there is a page right there. Then what you'll need to do is you'll need to read through these statements and initial each one. And then what you're going to do is you're going to have this form signed, dated, and then get your instructor's signature and date it. And that's the other reason why we need to have that printed. So once you have that printed, you're going to take a picture of it with your phone. You're going to scan it. Some way you need to get it in electronic form. And I want to remind you, we need to have all pages in electronic form. So don't just give me the top sheet or the back sheet. I need all the pages. So then what you'll do is you'll go over to enter requirement and you'll basically go through the steps we used last time. You'll select the requirement and that's our hack program standards. You will, um, right here, these are the other things that you've already uploaded. It's not one of those. What you'll do is you'll go to browse and you'll find that document that you just scanned or you just took a picture with with your phone, wherever that is saved, you'll upload that. You'll put in today's date and you'll submit it. Okay, I didn't do those steps, I didn't scan it, but you, you know how to do that because you've already done that for your other compliance documents. The same thing is true for the mandated reporter training certificate. Um, there's nothing to print. You need to go to www.reportabusepa pit.edu and do the mandated reporter training to obtain the certificate. It's typically a two to two and a half an hour, hour training. You don't have to do it all at once, but you'll go there, you'll complete your training, and then when you have your certificate saved electronically, what you'll do is go to enter requirement, and again, you'll select your requirement, you'll select your certificate, that's what you're going to upload. You're going to browse your documents and select it, put in the date and submit it. And that's how you can become compliant in the optional categories. Now, typically in Education 110 and 111, you'll do the NACI Code of Conduct and the Hack Program Standards and also the cell phone policy. If you are joining Compleo after Education 110 or 111, you will just go ahead and do that again. The mandated reporting certificate is done in Education 180. But if you're at the Gettysburg campus, you will have to do the mandated reporter training in 110 because it is required for your placement in Head Start. This is how we get compliant in our optional categories.